The following program has been brought to you by Sammy Joseph Ministries. And now for his message today, here is Reverend Sammy. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 26, we heard the question was being asked again, what shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For 40 days, that question has been rumoring amongst the camp. What shall be done to the man that can take away the reproach from Israel. Now, three things King Saul promised to do. Number one, the king will enrich him with great riches. Number two, the king will give him his daughter to wife. And number three, the king will make his family, his brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers tax-free in the whole of Israel. See, there comes a someday, somewhere, sometime, somehow that God presents his chosen servant with opportunity to come out of the cave, to come out of the valley onto the forefront. And I believe this day is your day. I believe by the anointing that is following these words of mine that I'm preaching, these words of God, I believe that God will take you out of the cave. God will take you out of hiding. God will take you out of insufficiency. God will take you out of insecurity and bring you out to the forefront. David seized upon the opportunity that was presented him. David showed up in obedience to his father Jesse to go and see the welfare of his brothers. He had met them hiding in the trenches. And so he came out boasting, I will fight this uncircumcised Philistine. Look at 17, 1 Samuel 17 and 34 to 37. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came out a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine. That's what you got to say. You want to live a victorious Christian life? That's what you've got to say. This uncircumcised Philistine, this uncircumcised trouble that keeps on perennially following me, this uncircumcised lack that keeps on perennially following and troubling me, this uncircumcised sickness that perennially is troubling my life and my destiny, you've got to get agitated in your spirit. Why? Because there is a cause. Why? Because there is a reason for this. There is a reason for this because this uncircumcised Philistine is defying the army of the living God. The army of the living God is victorious. The army of the, of the living God is triumphant. The army of the living God is marching on in victory. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the living God. But in our lives, sometimes then we find these Philistines are coming over us and taking territories of our friends. It's time to rise up in our spirit. It's time to get agitated in our hearts. We are hearing these loud voices for the past 40 days. He's been coming out, the Bible says, day and night. Give me a man to fight me. Give me a man to fight me. Am I not a Philistine? And you servants of Saul, now you've got to wake up in your spirit of your mind today and say, I'm a child of the living God. Satan, take your hands off me. I'm a child of God. I'm not a servant of Saul. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that there is a cause. Look at it. He has defied the armies of the living God. Look at verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of his hand today, the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord will go with you. Saul guarded and armed David with his armor and helmet and a coat of mail and a sword. And he says, try this on. And so the 13 year old boy tried all these things on. They were too heavy for him. And he says, I'm sorry, King. 
I cannot go with this. I cannot go with this. So what did David go with? Now David went with the knowledge that makes the praise to become the predator, that makes the weak to become the strong, that makes the victim to become victor. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew nigh the Philistine. These are the things that you also need to take along with you today to face the trouble of your life. First, David took his staff in his hand. What does that represent? Shepherd's staff signifies the authority of the Word of God. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but in it thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do everything that is written therein, and then you will show your way prosperous, and you will make good success. The authority of the Word of God is imperative if you're going to live a victorious Christian life. You will make your way prosperous and have good success. That's what the Bible says. God is not going to come down to read the Bible for you. God is not going to come down to give you the authority of the Word. It's already here. All you've got to do is to be able to stick with the Word of God and put the Word right near your nose. The Bible, the Word of God, is spirit and it's life. It has everything in it to fight the Goliath. It has everything in it to fight the perennial trouble of your life and win. It's by this same Word of God that the heavens and the earth were made. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Look at that. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod of the shepherd comforts the shepherd. The authority of the word will comfort you. The rod of the shepherd is quite long. It's used to guide, to guide, to nudge the sheep. You use the rod. You stretch it out and use it to nudge them to the right hand side, nudge them to the left hand side. You guide them. You goad them. It becomes a goad. You use it as a goad to goad the cattle. You go this way, go that way. Also, you use the shepherd's rod. Sometimes you have naughty sheep. They always want to go out of the fold. They want to follow the dogs. So in order for them not to follow the dogs, you use, the shepherd will use his staff sometime to break their limbs. When you break their limbs, you just give them a knock like that, they go down and then they settle down. And then you can carry them and go look after them. Also, the shepherd's staff is used as a javelin sometime. The shepherd will throw it, will throw it at an animal to safeguard his sheep. Lastly, when the shepherd is tired and weary, his arms are weary, you cross, he crosses the shepherd's staff right across his shoulders like that and hangs onto it and says, you and I alone, we have a long way to go. Also, the shepherd's staff is used by the shepherd to lean on. It's a lean on. It's a lean on after he's walked a long, long way and is tired. He holds on the shepherd's staff and leans on it. You take the authority of the Word of God with you. The Bible says that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but in it you shall meditate, think about it with me, day and night. See, the Philistine came out 40 days, day and night, to shout and rail and defy the armies of the living God. You, the army of the living God, who wants to live a victorious Christian life, you also will rail back on the devil by the Word of God. If you're fighting an affliction and disease, you look for a verse that deals with disease. If you're fighting an affliction of poverty, you look for a, a verse that fights the affliction of poverty. If you're fighting some generational curses, you look for a word, appropriate Rima word, that fights generational curses. And that's exactly how you become victorious in this Christian life. So not only did David, our dear little boy David, take the shepherd's staff with him. Not only did he take the shepherd's staff, the Bible says he took five smooth stones. What did they represent? The very first stone, therefore, that David took was the presence of the Lord. Psalms 46 
and verses 1 to 7. Psalms 46 and verses 1 to 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof row and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Pause about it, think about it, sailor. We will not be afraid. Even though the Goliath is nine footer and we are two feet, we will not be afraid. Even though we are outnumbered, we will not be afraid. Even though the homeowners come to threaten to send you out, we will not be afraid. Even though the banks come for a foreclosure, we will not be afraid. Even though the doctors say that you've got this long to leave, we will not be afraid. We've got a God who is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in a midst of horror. She shall not be moved. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. Worship with us at any of our branches where you would be welcomed with warmth and love. To reach us, simply call the phone number that you see on the screen for the church in your region. You may also write us or visit us online at harvestways.org. Reverend Sammy Joseph has written several books that are available through Harvest Ways website at harvestways.org. Enjoy inspiring and rich teaching through each one of these engaging books. Destroying the Power of Delay, Possessing Your Canaan, Before You Step Into Someone Else's Shoes, and Gideon, Releasing the Potential Within You. Visit harvestways.org to order your copy today. To become saved, follow the ABCD Steps of Salvation today. A. Accept You're a Sinner. B. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. C. Confess Jesus as Lord and Savior over your life with your own mouth and D, depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to live the new life in Christ. Pray this short prayer with me. Heavenly Father, please forgive my sins today. Come into my heart and write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to assure you that you're forgiven and have become a child of God. Write Reverend Sammy Joseph today. He would love to hear from you. May God richly bless you. Amen. Please take time to visit our website and order any of our books at harvestways.org. We deliver around the world. You may also support this ministry on the same website, harvestways.org, by clicking the Sow a Seed button. Connect with Reverend Sammy on Facebook and Twitter, searching for Sammy O. Joseph. This broadcast has been paid for by the Sammy Joseph Ministries. We thank you for your generous support. <laughs>